Finally, a video on what this channel should really be about. My fucked up life, animated. And the thumbnail may have you thinking otherwise, but this whole story is 95 century. Where's that other 5% gone? Well, it's a combination of my limited drawing ability, not remembering the exact wording of things, and the fact that my mate John likes to dramatise any story he tells, so anything I wasn't there for, you gotta take with a pinch of salt. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Freshers Week Crappy freebies, uni events no one goes to, and a time to drink yourself half-blind with complete strangers and make enemies for the year ahead. My first week of first year was a bit different, though. We went to Spoons to Pre, got kicked out at 10pm, and returned to one of our flats to play Ring of Fire, hide from security, and add to the Chunder chart. If you haven't gathered already, I was Covid year. So although I started uni in September 2020, my freshest week was actually in 2021. By this point, I was already living in a house and had made mates for life, so the week was so much better. Or, at least, it could have been. My housemates and I wanted to create the freshest week we never had, so we threw on some cheesy tunes, but more importantly, we took out a freezer drawer and poured every kind of alcohol we had into one delicious cocktail. And being freshers inspired, you can bet there was a shit ton of sweet pussy drinks like Malibu and peach schnapps, as well as the cheapest mixes we could find, like Aldi's pineapple juice. So this batch of jungle juice was sweet, which meant that you couldn't taste the vodka we free poured into it. Being tolerable to drink, unlike our last one, which John stupidly blended a chilli into, we chugged it down and polished it all off. This was my first mistake, and the error that ended all of our nights. We started with six of us. We had a simple goal, going to a club in town, a feat which, individually, we'd done many times. But Covid meant that this was the first time we were doing it together. Or, at least, that was the plan. Everything that each person endured is frequently referenced as a classic story, so it's incredible to think it all happened in one night. Only two of us actually made it to the club, but for whatever reason, they decided not to stay long. Right before that, there was the penultimate casualty, John. For context, he didn't have contacts and didn't want to lose his glasses, so went without. I think part of his reasoning is that it helps him to pull, because he can't see how ugly the girls he's getting with are. But unsurprisingly, being blind has its drawbacks. My blood is going to burst. I'm not making it inside. A portaloo. Looks like my luck's beginning to turn. But that's not a... Don't even bother. Why is there a phone in here? Oh shit. I think I might call it a night. The first casualty of the evening was Rahul. The sheer amount of sweetness he'd quickly ingested wasn't sitting well. He couldn't hold it much longer. He was sitting at the back of the bus when suddenly... <laughs> the best part is, because it was so liquidy, it slid up and down as the bus moved. They could do nothing but watch it for ten minutes. When they got off, they shoved him in an Uber and hoped for the best. For most people, this in itself would be quite a crazy night. You can imagine how entertaining our Saturday morning debrief was. Everyone assumed they'd had the most messed up night, but each time they were proven very wrong. And that brings us to my story. Alright, there's a bus at 10.13, so we better get going in a couple of minutes. Hmm, I'm definitely not drunk enough, but I don't want to spend much at the club. This was my second mistake. This took me to at least a third of a litre of spirits that night, 
which for me usually meant nothing, but I was forgetting that I'd had the Malibu and peach schnapps, which, despite having low alcohol content, were ridiculously sickly. Okay, we'll have just enough time to make it. Hold on, why are there only five of us? Oh, for fuck's sake, Jake, you're gonna make us late. You guys go ahead and I'll wait for him. Finally, we need to run. They're not here, we must have missed it. This was my third mistake. I was too stupid to double-check Google Maps, so we went to the wrong bloody bus stop. Because the buses are usually every 15 minutes or so, we decided to wait a bit. But all that running had brewed something in my stomach. I'd been stone-cold sober five minutes prior, had skipped the tipsy stage, and was now drunk. Not off my tits yet, but soon to be. Nothing's coming, let's just go. Excuse me, do you know which way the Green King is? Why don't you know that? Ugh, you must be a fresher. I just moved into the halls down the road, actually. Gross. Well, it's just up here. This was my... well, actually, it was a mistake, but didn't end my night. I was never going to see this fucker again. I could have pointed in any direction. But I had to tell the truth and point the way we were going. He then invited himself to walk with us. He only talked to me, so Jake walked ahead a bit so he could have his Jake's thoughts. I don't remember exactly what the fresher and I were talking about, just a whole lot of nothing. I was definitely rude and dismissive to try to get him to fuck off. However, when I'm drunk, I always seem to forget that if you insult a guy, he instantly thinks you're coming on to him. You can imagine I have this problem a lot, given how much I love to bully people. It's at this point that he puts his arm round my waist, slowly moving down. I was far too drunk to process the situation. Jake clearly noticed, but didn't think anything of it, so kept walking. Eventually, I managed to shake off the sober guy. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, he was sober. Anyway, I finally thought of something to get him to leave. I'm not sure what. It could have been anything, from saying I had a boyfriend to saying I had a sex change. Whatever it was, it worked. We walked a bit further and got to Big Sainsbury's. This walking's making me tired. I think I need a little rest. Sure. I didn't think you meant like that. She all right? Never better. Hey. Oh God. <laughs> Why I thought it a good idea to lie in my own vomit, I don't know. It was almost all liquid, and being on a hill, it trickled down a good ten meters. My hair made me look like I'd been in a downpour, but that's disgusting. So I'm not drawing it. I'm going to get up in three, two, one. I could go for a walk tonight. All right, let's go for a walk back home, yeah? I need some time. I'm sorry, Jake. You, I mean, you can go without me. Nah, I'll see if I can get you a taxi. Did you manage to get a taxi? I am desperate to piss. Couldn't figure out how to order one. But it looks like someone else got one for you instead. Wait, they called a taxi for Fran. They thought I was so fucked. They, someone, someone walked past me and um, thought we were too drunk. We understand you've called an ambulance. We never called an ambulance. Well, we're here now, so please tell us the problem. Please, don't waste your time. I'm completely fine. Well, clearly not if someone called an ambulance. 
Sorry, can you please tell me why they called an ambulance? Because I have no idea. There was a concern that you'd been concussed from falling down the stairs. I was nowhere near the stairs. People assumed I was drunk because they walked past. They, they walked past me on the other side of the road. Um, so it seemed as if I was drunk. Well, obviously that's the case. But it seemed as if I fell down the stairs. He was with me the whole time. I wasn't drunk in the slight... Sorry. I wasn't... Um, I didn't... You were drunk, but you didn't fall down the stairs. Shut up. <laughs> um, I... I didn't throw up. I... You did throw up? What the fuck is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. Sorry. I'm... I'm just too drunk to understand anything right now. Do you need to be taken to the hospital? No, no, I, I'm fine. I, I don't want to waste your time. Please, go. Help someone that actually needs help. I think she needs to be taken to the hospital. I mean, I do really need a, p a wee. Could you give me a lift home? No. Are you sure? Because you'd be driving me anyway. No. Now sign this so we can prove we've dealt with this. No, I'm not signing anything. I didn't want you to come. This just shows I've wasted your time. We're not leaving till you sign it. That's stupid. The NHS clearly has their priorities straight. <laughs> Oi, fuck you! Very funny. Write your real signature. They went on their way. I pissed outside Big Sainsbury's, where there was no shelter and probably a million cameras, and we made our way home. I felt bad for Jake, because I stopped him from going to the club. But Jake being Jake, I think he enjoyed what happened far more than going to a shitty nightclub. And he couldn't judge. A few months prior, we were in the same situation with the roles reversed, but his scenario was so much funnier and more embarrassing. But that's a story for another day. So yeah. I think it's quite hard to top that as a Freshers' Week story. But in terms of my drunken antics, this tale's probably on the tame side. So if you enjoyed this, you bet you're going to love what's to come. Wow, you've made it this far. Thank you. It'd mean the world to me if you helped me out by liking and or subscribing, as well as checking out my other videos. And if people enjoy this video, there'll definitely be more of my tales to come.